Welcome back to Elden Ring the Ultimate Guide Part 19. It is Red Main Castle. If this is the first time you've watched any of these videos, then we recommend you watch the video linked in the description. If you have any tips of your own, then we put them in the pinned tips comment and people can look over them later. But now we are at Caled. We are warping to that site of grace that is before the uh, this uh, long bridge to Red Main Castle. And um, just be aware that you're going to get pelted off uh, big flaming rocks. So make sure you're dodging them. And, uh, aye, there's a few items outside the castle that we're going to get. Now, we're going to do this castle just now, because if we progress any further in the game, then it will start the uh, Red Redan Festival. So, we want to do everything in the game possible before Redan Festival, because Redan Festival progresses a bunch of NPC quests, so it's kind of like a point of no return, sort of. So, we're heading up this hill, we're jumping over onto this, uh, this, uh, guard tower and uh, when you drop down there is a smith and stone 6 so that's quite cool smith and stone 6 is nice yeah it's a and decent item the tower. to be picking up at this stage in the game actually yeah and that's a smith and stone 3 that we picked up behind it and that's those all the items for that part there but um otherwise yeah we want to just uh this is this is this part of the game is pretty much the last thing we have to do before a Dan Festival and then progressing to all this plateau. And it's in Caled, we're in Caled, so we might as well do it now, as opposed to doing Redan Festival and then doing Red Main Castle. It just doesn't make sense doing it that way. So heading along the rocks to get into Redan's uh to Castle Redmain, you can go in through the back by using Torrent, jumping up all these the, cl the, the cliff edge, I suppose, avoiding the bats. And um, I think it's Flame and Strike. I yeah, think. it is. Well remembered. Um, Flame and Strike is an absolutely incredible Ash of War. It is good on everything it can go on, but especially great hammers. And you will see that in action later in the game because it does oh, an yes. inordinate amount of stance damage. Um, it deals incredible fire damage. It gives you a, a temporary fire buff to your... Uh, to the weapon it's equipped on when used. It's just generally applicable for a lot of situations. Really good in PvE, really good in PvP. Worth having. And it is particularly least. good at um, doing a ton of damage to the uh, the air tree avatars. So now we've got a, an even better source of fire damage than even Blood Flame Blade. So aye, that's, uh, that's the official guide stance is air tree avatars are all now officially dead. So if you're if you found them hard, you you won't find them hard now. Yeah. If you found them hard, no, you didn't. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so in Redmain Castle, uh, there is obviously a bunch of Redmain sol foot soldiers, soldiers, knights, and they can, as we we have been over this, but they can drop the equipment that they're holding. So they can drop the brass shield. They can drop the the Lord Sworn sword. Um. Lord's one straight sword if they're holding it. This one is the uh, red main knight, of which they can drop the red the, the helm, the armor, the gauntlets, the greaves. The knight's great sword, the partisan if they're using it. That's the red main great shield. The the soldiers, which are the one that's still wearing the red surcoat but isn't the knight. Um, they can, like I said, drop the Lord's one straight sword, the brass shield, the Lord Sworn shield, which is the great shield that they can use. And in this room, there is just a bunch of, uh, just some dudes that I'm slaughtering for some reason. <laughs> These are the commoner enemy type, and they can drop yes. the commoner's guard, commoner's headband, commoner's shoes, um, as well as the weathered straight sword, if you wanted one for whatever reason. But grabbing a smithing stone there from behind the boards, another item hidden here, I think it's a cookbook. Could I think it wrong. is a cookbook, yeah. I want to say armorer's cookbook? I'd, well remembered. Now, uh, we um, opened that door, which is technically a shortcut, quote-unquote, but we really were never going to use that. Now, the foot soldiers, which are the... Oh, okay, so quickly, first of all, actually, this is a page. Uh, now, they can drop the page set, as well as they can drop the the red... So they, drop like a, they don't drop their weapons, but they drop a bow of some sort. The red um, branch short bow. Thank you. So they can drop that. I think this is the only page in this area. Uh, they're quite tough, actually, so just be aware that the pages can deal a lot of damage. But I slam to the rescue. 
but avoid be very aware of its bow of its bow attacks. So now we're fighting one of these lion guardians. Um, there's two of them. Which is why we baited one here using the bow and we're getting it caught in the doorway and kind of cheesing it this way using ass slam. Um, it's still kind of tough even doing it this way, but we certainly do not want to be fighting two of these at the same time. That is not going to end well, I'll tell you that. I mean, since it's in the doorway, you could have in theory poison misted it. Could have done that. You could have used a bloody slash through the doorway as well. That probably done quite a lot of damage. Um, not breath. Which we picked up in a previous part. Rotten breath, also. There's actually like a lot of different things that you could have done. Aslam is still is still good because you're going to be doing a ton of poise damage to it. Um, but ultimately, yeah, uh, that drops a Somersmith and Stone Four, and now we're going to use the bow, bait this one over as well. Uh, just to recap on the foot soldiers, they can drop the foot soldier set, which is the the uh, the foot soldier helm. Uh, and the Redan Foot Soldiers are the only one to drop the Foot Soldier Helm and not the Foot Soldier Cap. So there you go, that's where you get that. The Scarlet Tabard, uh, Dagger, Short Sword, Short Spear, um, Mushrooms and Smoldering Butterflies for the Foot Soldiers. Yeah, rule for the Foot Soldiers as with the Soldiers and the Knights is they drop gear relative to the area that they're in, so the ones in Lindell will drop gear relative to that area, the ones here will drop gear relative to Kaelid, and so on and so forth. So that was the Armour's Cookbook 4 we got in there, so obviously very important. And um, yeah, I think this the next little bit is fairly clear of enemies. I think this is a Somberstone, oh it's a Smith and Stone 4, nice, nice. Yeah, this bottom part really did just have the Lion Guardians into it. Um, in it, sorry, until you get to a staircase that was just over to the left of where we were there. Um, and then you're going to be encountering the foot soldiers and they're manning sort of little flamethrower turrets that we saw earlier in uh, Stormville. Yes. And they are guarding the path to the site of grace for this area. Now, if you had triggered the Radan Festival already, um, when you come here via Sending Gate, the one at the far end of the Impassable Great Bridge, this is where you would spawn, on that staircase there. And speaking of uh, Sending Gates, there is one inside Fort Gale that we cleared in the first half of Caelid, um, so episode 17. And if you take that Sending Gate at the very top of Fort Gale, it will bring you to the castle side of the Impassable Great Bridge, so you don't have to dodge the trebuchet fire. So here we are up this ladder. There's a pumpkin head. Um, we've fought a bunch of these before. So, you know, Aslam, avoid its head. It's easy enough. Honestly, I should probably just been hitting that with a sword. Sometimes you just get carried away with Aslam and you think it's the only thing you've got. And they can drop their headpiece, the chain link flail if they're wielding it, um, and sanctuary stones, and I think something else. Um, I think another crafting material, but the only relevant drops are the chain link flail and the headpiece. Yeah, and that was a Smith and Stone 5 we got, and the Flamberge. Yeah. Flamberge is an excellent weapon. It's a great sword class weapon, so in the same order as the Claymore that we found. It's basically an upgraded earlier. Claymore, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. It's a Claymore with bleed. Although it doesn't have thrusting R2s, it has sweeping R2s, so... If you wanted yeah. that bit of extra range and reach, you'd prefer the Claymore. If you would prefer some bleed, Use the Flambush. So, for reference, these guys specifically are the Rudan Foot Soldiers. Um, and they do look different from the other Foot Soldier class enemies. For instance, this is the helm that they're wearing, which is clearly a tighter fit on the head. The cap is the one with the, the wide brim. But uh, using the bow to get past these uh, flamethrower bits, and then um, for whatever reason, I was hitting them with the dagger. But yeah, uh, and then we're just running back here to get the grace as quickly as we're rude. <laughs> they just keep coming. Yeah, they do. Like, Charge him single yeah. file. We'll get him eventually. <laughs> <laughs> His sword will eventually break. We just throw enough men at the problem. <laughs> eventually, we'll win. So I now at least we can like just kill these guys in a kind of manageable way. But, aye, right, there we go. Nice and easy. So this is like, um, those... 
this particular path is now a, an item run part of this area. Uh, again, this is the Redan soldier. These are the foot soldiers. So the soldiers are the bigger ones. And um, Speaking I, of this being an item run, um, a lot of these items would be inaccessible to you um, if the Redan festival was currently active. So in this area with this Abductor Virgin, this mi mismatched Abductor Virgin, it has one uh, spinning axe and one swing axe. Um, so it's this door would have been hermaphrodite. Locked. Yeah. <laughs> um, this door would have been locked if the festival was active, so you couldn't get the red hot wet blade, which allows for fire and flame art infusions on your weapon. Yes. I guess while we're just fighting these enemies and grabbing the items, I will talk a little bit about what those infusions are and what the difference is. So flame art infusion scales with your faith. And the fire infusion is a strength scaling infusion, which actually outclasses heavy until you're at about 40 something strength. So it's it worth it's, it's a tool worth having keeping in your back pocket in case you need fire damage for any reason. Say a nerd tree avatar. So this particular um, encounter is actually a little tough. If you were to just charge straight across the bridge, there's actually a red main knight that is also there, and. Uh, there's also another soldier kind of hiding. So if you were to just run straight past there, you're going to get ganged up on, and it's not a fun encounter. So again, we're using the bow, paying dividends, and we're just baiting these guys out one at a time. I think there's only two, and then we can run over and fight the night. Yeah, yeah. And again, bow and ass slam and bleed. What more do you need? Except when it comes to specifically the fallen star beast, I guess. <laughs> I think the uh, I think the red main knights are some of the more interesting enemies in this area because they can actually use a variety of ashes of war on you. They can use lion's claw. They can use some variation of a raw ash of war. They can use giants on you. Saw all three of those in action yeah, over the last yeah. couple of parts. It's they're quite unique in that regard. So boss time coming up. The boss is another kind of sort of throwaway boss. First, it's it's a misbegotten and crucible knight boss. Uh, just to make a point, we've got a Smith and Stone 6 out of that chest next to the knight. But we're just going to use our normal boss setup. We're going to get the imps out. We're going to golden vow. We're going to take our physic flask. And um, our combination of traits yet again demolishes this enemy that is made of flesh. Uh, so the imps and aslam and bleed is just going to make this guy have a really fucking bad day. But you want to kill this guy quickly because you don't want to be fighting it alongside the Crucible Knight. But luckily, easy peasy, because the Crucible Knight actually has a little bit of a wind up before it shows up. And now we switch to our normal Crucible Knight tactic, which is Aslam, Aslam, counter, Aslam, Aslam, counter. Just repeat that until it's dead. But you need to make sure you land the Aslams solid and head first, otherwise it doesn't work. Like if he blocks the Aslam, you know, you need, you need to do it again, obviously. I guess since the strategy is set in stone, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, the reward for beating this. Your reward sure. is the Ruin's Greatsword. It's a phenomenal weapon, um, one of the colossal swords, and one of the legendary weapons you need for the trophy um, associated with it. Three of the legendary weapons off the top of my head are held by Misbegotten, and that's really annoying to me. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Rune's Greatsword has a pretty unique Ash of War. It's called Waves of Destruction. Um, when you use it, it projects this big um, line of explosions out of the floor towards your enemies. Um, it does very good stance damage. Its R2s have a little extra damage after the initial hit, which is kind of cool. Um, very fun weapon, but has a bizarre intelligence requirement that I wish it didn't have. <laughs> Or is it something meant like 34 or something? It's, it's like... You need something like 20-odd intelligence to use what's primarily a strength weapon. But as you can see, fairly standard fare for killing the um, Misbegotten and Crucible Knight. Got the Ruin's Greatsword, and now we're progressing up into uh, Castellan Jeren's area. Yeah. But as you can see with that boss, as long as you can kill the Misbegotten without the Crucible Knight and the Misbegotten... Because together... That's going to be a fucking nightmare. One on one, easy peasy. Prepare for so, trouble, make it double. 
Exactly. So here we are at Jeren. Um, just exhausted dialogue now. Um, his quest is tied to Selen's quest, but we'll show you when and when that's going to be relevant. I don't even think it matters what you pick here for the dialogue. No, it doesn't. It likewise um, doesn't really matter if you come and see him here now. Um, it doesn't affect his quest in any way. It's also tied to progressing the Radan Festival. So his quest is done until we do General Radan as yes. a boss. Um, and other than that, I think it'll just be upgrading yeah. gear, leveling up, and that'll be it for this part. Nice and as short. As you saw, we had enough to upgrade our weapon one time and enough to level up a little bit. And that is us. And okay, there we go. That's the Redan Festival. Done. Join us in part 20, where we're going to be doing Nocron and the Siofra Aqueduct. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.